Today, we're looking at a brown ink by J. Herban, Café des Isles. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, there's timestamps in the description down below, so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram, and if you're new here, I do fountain pen ink reviews every single day, so I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put it into this Nimesign Singularity with a fine nib. I wrote with it for a day. I then used it to take the notes for this video. This first writing sample is done on a standardized set of paper of Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia. There are additional writing samples later in a video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it came in a vial like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread halo sheen. It does have some very nice shading that's happening. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread halo sheen. Some very nice shading throughout 10 seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread halo sheen. Very nice shading, 14 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show us some color variation left to right and we get it in the writing. How about Tomoe River? No bleeding, light Tomoe River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread halo sheen. No real shading. No, I mean, it's like I want to say that there is, but there's not. The medium is a little lighter than the stub with no feather spread halo sheen. There's spots of shading, spots that are a little bit darker, but that's about it. 17 seconds to dry. Medium is lighter than the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, some very nice shading in here. 24 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both aren't really showing any color variation, although we do get it a lot here. Specks of it up in the extra fine. And Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some very nice shading that's going on. Nice mid to dark tones, a lot. 11 seconds to dry. Medium is lighter than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, very nice shading. 15 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows a lot more color variation than the medium, but they both show some and we do get some in the writing. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see that this is a very light uh, red leaning brown that pushes its way up, but it's just that dye. There's no other colors mixing in here. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And it doesn't travel nearly as far, so it gathers together at the top much more. And there's a line that's beginning to form on the bottom as if it wants to be a little bit resistant. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I would not use this in a note-taking situation because of the amount of blowout. There, there's just no reading half of that word. I wouldn't use it. Water is lifting all of the dark tones. It is not moving all of the ink. It's moving all of the ink. It's just not removing all of the ink, even though water's all that it took to get this out of my pen. Now, pen flush is breaking it up a little bit more, but we do see some there. We do see the dots of the Rhodia dot pad coming through. Again, water is all that I needed. Pen flush, or pen flush, one third bleach solution, completely removed it from the paper, but there's no need to use that when water will get it out of your pen. I test the viscosity or flow using a tilt test, which I'm gonna link the video showing how I do that. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5 with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. J. Herban's Café de Isles has a viscosity of 2.28, making it normal. 
To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average all of those. Now, for the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. J. Herban's Café de Isles has an average dry time of 15 seconds, making it again normal, and making it one of those inks where its viscosity and its dry time show up in about the same place on the bell curve, which is always interesting. Instead of finding inks that look like J. Herman's Café de Isles, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I wanted to get a nice magenta, and I chose Robert Oster's Copper. The second writing sample is done on Yellow Rhodia, P. Berger, and White Lines paper. Here we're looking at the Yellow Rhodia, really to see if it has any kind of effect on the tone of this brown ink. And it does slightly, as in it makes it look a little more red-leaning than it is on the white, but that's about the only thing that we're actually seeing. We're seeing it lean a little bit more red, but ever so slightly. Not that most people that work where they have certain colors they have to use, typically use a brown. This is P. Berger. It's a French rule, student grade paper. It does have some bleeding that occurs, some spots. It would stop me from using the back of the page, but it might not stop you. Uh, it does have some ghosting, very minor, very minor. You could, if you chose to use the back of the page. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it does offer some very nice shading spots throughout here. Three seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, and still very nice shading. This is very nice shading on paper that normally doesn't shade well because it's so absorbent. It only took four seconds to dry and still shows shading. Now the scrubby for both, left to right, do show some color variation and we do get it in the writing. Last up is White Lines Paper, with no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading, as in some darker letters here and there, four seconds to dry. Medium is a little bit lighter than the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, better shading than we get with the extra fine. It's much more pronounced, looking at how brown goes from dark to light to dark. It's very nice. Five seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine, far left to far right, does show some color variation. The medium shows color variation. And we did get it in the writing. And that is all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of J. Herban's Café des Isles? I think this is a very nice light brown that offers an amazing amount of shading. I really do enjoy using it. And I, like I've enjoyed a lot of their inks, it doesn't feel undersaturated to me. It feels very earthy in tone. So what nib and pen are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? I didn't care for how it looked from very wet pens because it put down a very solid tone and lost its shading. But as long as you're not using a very wet pen, you're going to get shading and you're going to get great tones. Anything but a wet pen for this ink. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and Thanks for watching.